Good afternoon. The day is Sunday, June 21st, 2020, and it's about 525 uh, p.m. here in Pasadena, California. And here is the update for the last week in no particular order. So United Airlines is borrowing against their mileage program. I find that very interesting uh, just because being able to value the uh, the mileage points as an asset for the purposes of borrowing. I think that's very interesting. Um, as you know, I'm sure we have a points program attached, Sportsfolio points program attached to ASM. So that's why I'm bringing this up. Uh, the Hertz bankruptcy, obviously this is a big story. Uh, Hertz being the flagship that really started the car rental business. A very strange deal they had uh, to sell shares at least for a little while that looked like uh, they were shares in a company that had filed bankruptcy apparently the sec reversed on that and that's been pulled down but i'm i'm really surprised that that happened in the first place it, it doesn't seem um you know based on my understanding of the securities laws how that ever even happened that they were allowed to sell these these shares in a company that was obviously in bankruptcy it's bizarre um, on that same thread, that it tells me that creative financing deals are on the uptick. That's usually the case in times of financial stress like this. You have very non-conventional financing deals show up. Um, you know, I'm bringing that up because that's favorable for us uh, in terms of, you know, how our financing looks going forward in this kind of an environment because lenders, investors, such they have to be more creative and not so regimented according to the standard rules of how things are done in times like this. So I am seeing a lot of very interesting financing deals come along and I think that that's uh, material for us, uh, not at the present moment, but it will be because it just gives you an idea of where the environment is uh, right now. A lot of stories about uh, sports in general losing fans, uh, meaning that you know, having, there's a real threat, especially in the modern age when attention spans are so short that if you, your audience disappears for a while, that they may disappear forever. So there are some stories now about, uh, there's concern in the sports industry that because it's paused, uh, that they may lose fans permanently. So that was kind of the thinking that I had in, uh, maybe we should find some way of adding an esports component to our offering uh, for sports that have players on the field as an option for a way to continue fan involvement in these off times. That's kind of where I was thinking. And now I'm seeing that, that uh, actually that idea of fans permanently losing interest become a, um, a media talking point. So it's just something to think about. So uh, a couple things here I want to point out regarding comments, stories, and other things that you see uh, on the gambling faction continuing to press with uh, promoting of sports gambling. That's not going to stop. They've been salivating over this prize for more than 20 years. They're not going to stop regardless of whether sports are stopped and there are no sports to gamble on or any other stories because they put all their chips on that side of the line. Uh, it's a red or black kind of call. And they're going to continue to press forward because they have billions of dollars invested. And it's really the only thing the public knows. Um, you know, that's, there is no such thing as invest in sports performance. That's what we bring to the market. That's our distinction. That's our, uh, that's our compare and contrast story. So, of course, that's going to continue no matter what, because that's the track they're on. But that has no bearing on what we're doing. It's it's like saying that the people that were promoting horses in the time when cars were coming out, of course, they're going to continue to promote horses, even when cars are on the field, because that's their livelihood. But ultimately, cars won because it's a better option. That's exactly the same thing that's happening here. I don't expect anybody to slow down or stop their efforts because a they a they don't know about us in most cases and even if they do they're certainly not going to embrace this because it's against their own interests. So to think that we're going to somehow stop something that's 
been going on for hundreds, if not thousands of years, just because we bring the new option to the marketplace, you know, right now, it's just not how it's going to work. How it's going to work is that we're going to steal all their customers, ultimately, the same way the car industry stole all the customers for horses. So that's really the, that's what's going on here. Don't don't get confused. This is not a uh, this is not a marathon. This is you know I mean this is not a, a sprint. It's a marathon. It's not a, a short race. It's a long race. They are the established idea. It's our job to bring the new idea to the table uh, of sports investing and then take their customers, just like the automobile business did unquestionably to the horse industry. So casino cash. Uh, Vegas reopening, lame. There, Look, no way around it. It did not go off last weekend the way it was supposed to. Uh, there's no way you can argue with those uh, pictures. So now the discussion is about cash and, and poker chips and all of that and, and how's that going to work and they want to go cashless. Well, they want to go cashless because they the the liability requirement the liability exposure from uh, touching poker chips. But there's a bigger problem than that, which is uh, people don't want to go, you know, uh, cashless because a lot of funny business goes on in casino transactions, and a lot of people that get their winnings don't want that stuff reported to the taxing authorities and such. So in the effort to suppress the the tax evasion and the other types of corruptions, uh, they're you know because they're afraid of germ liability, which is again insurance is going to be the driver underneath all of this stuff. That they're looking at getting rid of the chips, which is just going to make um, it's going to make things even uh, more difficult. So oh, there was a low the audio just so you know on the last video I was trying out a different microphone setup is way too low. So sorry about that. That's that's why it was low. It's not anything wrong on your side. So. Uh, uh, money laundering, can't, yeah, so that further plays into the difficulties of promoting gambling and promoting gambling in COVID-19, and again, it's another negative for the industry, uh, going cashless, big, 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 huge negative, and forget about the tactile uh, desire of people wanting to touch the cash and the poker chips and all the rest of that stuff, which is not a small part of the, the appeal. Um, Gary Halberts, so just a quick note. Gary Halbert's uh, stock trading system, which was something I helped promote uh, many years ago, uh, was based upon news changing the stock market prices. So that's really how I learned about uh, marketing and how, mar uh, how public messaging affects uh, consumer behavior and all of that, because this was a stock system that was how to read the, the news articles that you see, get those news articles really quickly, before other people, and then assess how that news is going to affect the stock price. So that, you know, in order to make a buy or a sell decision. So that that education is really where I got my marketing uh, knowledge from. And just, you know, that is what drives the stock markets. I mean, actually, that's what drives just basically everything. But in the modern uh, culture, the, the, the writ large example is the stock markets and how the news moves the stock markets. And you can clearly see that uh, happening in this whipsawing that's going on uh, in this era of COVID-19. So just to bring that up. Uh, the World Vision benefit is now at 10 times. So again, uh, for every dollar that we receive, we take 10%. We uh, contribute that to World Vision, which multiplies it by 10 because of their relationships with corporate uh, sponsors and municipal sponsors and government sponsors for matching. They match it. So essentially, every dollar we get in goes back out equivalently. You know, we get in uh, $100, we take $10, we contribute that uh, to World Vision, which multiplies it by 10. That's the current multiple, uh, which essentially puts all of that money back out into uh, into foreign aid. Why are we doing this? Because when we originally set up the nonprofit and we hired a, uh, a consultant, Joe Lublin, to tell us how to handle the PR for this nonprofit, she said, until we have a nonprofit mission that people can see, which is our educational program, uh, you know, formally done, formally set up, then we have to have some other nonprofit as a beneficiary to at least 10% of our income should go that direction. So that's why we picked, uh, it doesn't matter which one, 
Um, it was my decision to pick World Vision because they have the largest multiple that I can find. And uh, they've been around a long time and they're well respected in terms of doing foreign aid work. And we usually contribute to just general needs things um, and education, general needs, meaning food and shelter and then educational stuff. Um, you know, that's that's usually where I put it. I look for the highest uh, multiple in their offerings. And again, that's where the 10x comes from. Uh, you can sort by gifts that multiply. If you want to look at their site, you can go there and see it yourself. I just go to the highest number, and the, presently that's for food aid and for um, generally for education type type aid. Um, alcohol is now banned on 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 most flights. I'm seeing. I'm not sure which airlines are and aren't participating in this, but man, wow, that's. Uh, I mean, flying was miserable enough. I guess <laughs> add that to the list. Um, so, you know, the, the 2000, relative to the 2008 crash, this is a much more uh, difficult financial crash than even the last one was. Uh, although, you know, last time we, we were in a much more difficult situation because we didn't have the ASM market. We, we didn't have both products uh, for, for patent pending on both products, which we do now. Uh, being the SRI and ASM, we didn't have any kind of public footprint that we could lean on. So all of that, you know, my outlook as to the threat, it, it actually has opened up the opportunity for us because of the, uh, the sports is frozen, basically. And uh, I mean, it's obvious, right? And, and restoring sports is the is the selling proposition. But also our our, our footprint is larger. We have both products uh, out and we have a bigger footprint. So it's not the threat that it was for us in 2008, uh, but it is a bigger threat in general than it was in 2008. The Oscars have been moved to April 2021. Again, these are very important uh, timelines to watch because none of that is going to happen if all um, possible angles to hold it on time or, or you know, sooner rather than later, okay, because of what's at stake and on the investments made. So that's almost a year from now, okay? So all of this talk about open center, it's just, it's fancy. It's, it's, it's happy talk, fanciful nonsense. Uh, we are the insurgent candidate. So back to the investing versus gambling, and I'm going to say this a thousand more times or 10,000 more times if I have to. There is no way to beat us on that word okay it's a word competition like politics is there's two only two options in politics stay the course which is uh, status quo and change okay there, there's only two types of political elections in the same way in sports uh, and fi finance meaning applying your knowledge to sports there is only uh, gambling okay to the public's knowledge we are invest okay so the competition is bet versus invest, and we are the invest candidate. And again, any, any category, any sector of the economy, any topic you give me, the only time, and that's even tenuous, that bet is going to win if I'm available, okay, meaning that I'm the invest side of the argument, the only time bet is going to win is when that's the only available option. So the only way to suppress our rise is to keep us out of the game. And believe me, I'm, I'm near certain that that is, has happened and continues to happen. Because if we get in the game, they're out, okay? There is simply no way. We offer a superior product on every possible category. What it does for the fans, what it does for the leagues, what it does for the taxing authorities, what it does for society. There is simply no question. We are the superior candidate. So... That's the insurgency, okay? We are the insurgent candidate. We are the underdog candidate. Only underdog in terms of backing and financial support at this time. But conceptually, we are the superior candidate. And that is what I'm banking everything on. And that is why I believe so strongly in what we're doing and why I don't give up on it is because I know that facts count and the story counts and reality counts. And when the competition comes right down to it, we are the superior option. And it's just a matter of making sure that that information gets into the right hands. So DraftKings, 
exactly what I said. These guys wound this IPO up. They, they hyped it out through all of their surrogates, and they sold out in, by expanding the round. That's what they did. They, they had a, a slack in their offering documents. This is a common thing. They expanded the round, and they cashed out. Now watch what happens from here on out. They have almost a billion dollars in the treasury from all of this stock selling, but they also said they need it for marketing in the next roughly 12 months. Just what I told you. They're going to try to cram all this crap down everybody's throat like they did with the daily fantasy stuff. And again, these guys have no profit history. They have never made a single dime at any point through their entire history. They have lost, and I would imagine this point has got to be over a billion dollars. They've lost over a billion dollars pursuing this, okay? But they haven't made any money yet, okay? And they're still not, and they don't foresee making any money yet. Okay, so they're going to spend this money to try to cram down everybody's throats. Sports gambling, which people already know what that is. You don't have to tell them what that is. You think they're going to, you're going to convince them to gamble because all of a sudden you're saying that they should gamble? They already know what it is. It's been available for a very long time. So you're going to try to cram sports gambling down the public's throat in the middle of a one in a hundred year pandemic when nobody has enough money to pay for their groceries and their rent. It's like selling hyper expensive cigarettes to people in a hospital ward. It doesn't make any sense. Um, although Robin Hood, and I'll get to that in a second, Robin Hood shows the appetite people have for investing. Okay. And I'll get to that in a second. It's a separate story. But it is exactly as I said. They're building the treasury. They're going to have to bankroll a whole bunch of money because they've got to survive this downturn. They've got to continue to market and convince people that sports gambling is the wave of the future. Utter nonsense. Everybody knows this. Only hardcore gamblers and people that are in the industry are going to support that notion. The public knows better. It's not a new thing. Okay, You're not showing them something they haven't seen before. So it's just not going to work. It's not going to work. They're not going to come back. They don't have the desire. They don't have the money. And it just, it's just slimy. I mean, it's really, I mean, this is what you want to be selling people in this time period. And there is not, it's not going to change. <laughs> it's not going to happen. You think this, this wave is, is going to disappear or there's not going to, look at the map. Look at the John Hopkins map and look at the trajectory. Okay. If you don't like that map, go find another map. It's not going to go down in this timeline, at least until some major change in federal policy uh, takes place. Nicola, so much for not having a new, uh, uh, an original thought, uh, I guess this is supposed to be a Tesla competitor uh, just by using the first word, you know, the guy's first name instead of his last name. Uh, billions valuation with zero sales. <laughs> Zero. Not, I mean, it's okay. Um, ASM and SRI case getting stronger by the day for two sides. SRI, sports risk index, mainly, mainly for man managing industry risk. The sports industry has absolutely no vehicle to manage systemic risk. If we would have had the SRI uh, live in the markets before the pandemic started, the sports industry would have saved billions and billions of dollars, still would be saving a ton of money, maybe not in the billions, but a lot. Um, in the ASM case, there's a risk management component, but mainly it's, uh, it's the public side of it and the, and the ecosystem uh, creation for uh, sports investing as an asset class. So uh, to the gambling faction, I want you to give me one case, one. That's all I want to hear. One case where sports gambling or gambling created jobs outside the casino floor or within a five mile radius uh, of the casino and built a thriving economy or fixed a budget anywhere on the planet other than Las Vegas and Clark County, okay? Because Clark County and Las Vegas are based upon that in the very center of the, of the, of the state or, or the Las Vegas center, you know, going from there outward. But other than that, you have no example anywhere on the face of the planet where it has built anything valuable for the society other than the usually relatively low paid workers on the floor, the owners and the people that are direct beneficiaries from the owners. Okay. So 
to, and I'm seeing these attempted stories coming out saying that, oh, well, you budget gaps, which are enormously huge in the state budgets from the COVID-19. To say that sports gambling would contribute to that is so preposterously stupid. I mean, you can take any example. If you look at the holes in the budget that these guys are facing uh, in the states, there isn't even, it doesn't even count in the noise. Their most optimistic projections for the budgets from if you do what we tell you, which is sell this poison to people, they don't, the most optimistic projections don't even come close to filling the gap. So first, their best numbers won't get the job done, won't even come close to get the job done. And they're going to be lies. They're always lies. It's never accurate. It's always overblown, massively overblown. It's never been right. And they never add the negatives in. They never, they never talk about the part where the state has to pay the costs. So it's just more lies and more deception and trickery from people who make their living off of tricking people because that's what gambling is. There is nothing else going on. All gambling is a sophisticated math ruse on an unsuspecting public. That's all it is. So if you put that into the system on a wide scale, you think you have problems now with the budgets? It will be wrecked totally. There will be nothing left of your budget and it will be Mad Max in your state. Is that what you want? Is that what you want? Is that what your constituents want? Mad Max? I really doubt it. So Robin Hood. So the guy that runs Robin Hood, apparently is big mouth jackass. Look, dude, investing is serious stuff. You got a real clever angle on sports trading and a cool name and you found some people to back your product and take you out into the market. But to go out and treat investing as a game, the result of that is you now have a suicide on your hands. Okay? That's the reward for being reckless. Investing is not a game. And the same thing is true for our entire economy. I think this whole gamification thing is the problem. Okay? I think people don't understand that life is serious and investing is serious and these decisions are serious. So maybe, maybe, just maybe, the game thing has gone a little bit too far. Maybe it's time to reel that back a bit and instead of treating everything as a joke and as just a bunch of doesn't matter, nothing matters, maybe it's time to take it a lot more seriously at all levels, not just, you know, stock trading, but everything okay stop betting in general and start investing in general so good numbers out of robin hood though is that the volume is way up like i think i saw more than 10 times and deposits are multiple times over normal and they are twelve hundred and twenty four hundred dollar uh increments in some case a lot of cases apparently enough to identify that data point that's positive, okay? That tells me that people tell people know, the public knows that they probably should be investing, right? That's a signal for that, so that's positive. And I believe that ASM is the equivalent of DraftKings and, and, and Robinhood put together, those be, the benefits of those things. You, investing in sports performance rather than, than betting on sports performance, which is all the gambling can and ever will be, and then the ecosystem and the investment side and the public uh, attraction to get to investing, you put those together and that's what ASM is. ASM is the sum of those two things. It's the public's desire to, to speculate on sports as evidenced by daily fantasy and gambling. And it's the ease of use and accessibility and low entry, right? Because they let you invest low dollar amounts. I've talked about that with ASM. Let people put it just a couple dollars in. Um, that's, that's the combination that, that's what we have. That's what we, what we, what ASM represents. And yeah, back to the gamification. We need to talk about value creation, genuine value creation, not, not the illusion of value, <laughs> the actual creation of value, because real value will always bring a price. Okay. Our economy and our culture appears to be 
and have been moving for quite a while away from that towards uh, Las Vegas paper mache gold glitter paper uh, appearance of value. But when you dig underneath it, there's there's nothing there. So that's the problem to solve. Get back to the core value creation and the problem, you know, all these other things are symptoms of that. That's that's the real problem. And then I would say, where's the public outcry for gambling? Show me where the public is clamoring for legalized gambling in this country. Actually, anywhere in the world, but you know, for the topic of this, where's that happening in the United States? Where are there protests being held, uh, like we see right now, where people are complaining that, you know what, we just, if we could just gamble on our smartphones, everything would be great. It doesn't exist. It's a lie. It's pushed on us by the pimps and the operators. MLB closing training camps. I don't, you know, this greedy trying to get the baseball season started uh, in July or August, it's just utter greedy nonsense. And the, the MLB training camps are back to being closed again, contamination, people being tested positive, et cetera. Et cetera. This is so premature and so... Another example of human behavior of being short-sighted, greedy, get, let's get this on with. What's, why it's taking so long? What's taking so long is that COVID-19 doesn't care about political boundaries, okay? Lines on a map are not viewable from space, okay? Germs don't care whether you're on te in Texas, California, Florida, New Mexico, Arizona, Somalia, Russia. It, it, it doesn't care, okay? To create lines on a map and create different rules for the lines that don't exist on the ground. <laughs> I'm just not going to say anything further. It's just not going to work. It's not going to work. Uh, NSC, uh, NCAA football players, okay, because that season, of course, is coming. Also testing positive. Uh, shutting down training facilities. Okay, so uh, this is just going to keep happening. Okay, it's just going to keep happening, keep happening. Keep ha it's, it's, the virus is not going to be subject to Twitter nonsense and lies and manipulation and, and White House generated bullshit. It's just not going to. It's going to continue to sicken and kill people until the medical and science is followed, period. So on debate, uh, I would like to have a debate with anyone and everyone who believes that sports gambling is the way forward uh, for this country. Every Sheldon Adelson, Jason Robbins, any of you guys, all of you guys, I'll take you all on on a stage. And we'll argue about sports investing versus sports gambling. This is an open challenge. You tell me when, you tell me where. I'll take one of you on, I'll take all of you on. And I will prove to you that ASM will kick your ass every single time. And that you will never accomplish what you're saying. And all you're going to end up doing is destroying what's left of the republic. So let me know. Just write an email to support at asmfree.com. Somebody will get back to you. So Q2 2020 for us. So the, the last year, and I've been saying this since last year, long before this uh, coronavirus event, uh, the economy was weakening. I told the team that. I've mentioned that on the conference calls. Uh, I mentioned that on other updates. Uh, it's been softening for a while, for a year, basically. So for the first time uh, in 10 months, the, uh, the Q2 2020, all three months so far, okay, so uh, you know, our cash flow positive, Q2 2020, uh, that's um, April, May, June. April and May are positive and June's positive so far. So that's, that's a very positive sign for us in the last um, 12 months. And the, the, uh, the, the, the program members will get the details of those financial reports in the program information that they get separately. 
And then finally, the Trump rally flop from yesterday. Thank God, honestly, because uh, uh, that was uh, going to be a super spreader nightmare to end all nightmares. And uh, fortunately, it looks like from all the pictures I've seen, and you can spin it any which way you want, There's, they're from all over the place. The arena was half full. At best, it was half full. There was no overflow. There's nobody outside to speak of. Um, I guess it turns out that people are actually concerned about catching a fatal disease by violating the science and appearing at a uh, at a cult of personality rally for a convicted uh, impeached president. Um, I mean, convicted. I mean, he was impeached. He wasn't removed, but he was impeached, and that's the fact of it. So I guess you know it is a little bit of sense still left out there, and and. Separate of the politics, I think it's important to see that this is a story of what you, you can expect to see happen if you restart sports uh, without the proper, well, honestly, without the vaccine in place. There, there's no way to guarantee anybody is safe in, a stand, in the stands of, of any stadium or any place like that without the vaccine. So what you're seeing there is a writ large example of people even the most passionate people, and I'm sure there were a lot more than roughly eight or 9,000, and that's all it is. I mean, it's eight or 9,000 people were in that stadium uh, that wanted to be there or were certainly supporters, uh, rabid supporters that did not show up, okay? So I would equate those people to sports fans, and it's going to be the same thing. You know, you can reopen, but if the science isn't there and the safety isn't there, People are not going to show up, okay? So this is the problem to solve in the sports industry, and we've just seen a huge indicator of, of, of that fact, regardless of the rules of reopening, you've just seen that played out on, on the world stage in a very, very, very uh, big, dramatic way. So that's all I have uh, for this weekend. Uh, I will report again uh, to you again next uh, Sunday, and thank you to all of you who continue to support uh, and uh, you know ASM and believe in what we're doing here. Bye now.